Are you planning to plant some fruit trees this year? Or have you planted some fruit trees already this year? Well, let me show you something that you really want to plant before planting your fruit trees. I went to visit a young couple who had, were so excited. They had just planted an orchard of fruit trees. It was great. I'm so glad they started. I always like when people just start. And I looked at their fruit trees, where they are, and right next to it, they had a big forest. And I asked them, I said, do you get a lot of deer here? Do you have a lot of deer? They said, yeah, we have deer. So I went over, as I was approaching, I went over to the first fruit trees and I looked. And right away, the first ones I can see, the tops had all been eaten off. And literally, I went through the whole orchard and every fruit tree had been nipped off. The new growth, because they were it was spring, it had grown and the trees were growing. And the tops of every one were just nipped off and some of the lower branches as well. It's not the best way to start your young orchard because, well, you can end up with some pretty stunted trees if that's how, what you let happen. So let me show you a few strategies you can use if you are in deer country and you want to have the benefit of fruit trees. We've had this orchard for th almost 30 years now. The owner before who had planted the original monoculture orchard that we had he put in this fence. This has been up since 1980. So it's been a while. It's a fence that was meant to keep out people and deer. Well, we're right on the edge of town. This is an excessive fence for deer. I mean, it'll keep out dogs as well. So it's a frost fence with barbed wire on top about five feet high. Technically not even quite high enough to be a real deer fence. We've just added to the layers. Deer can jump. I mean deer can jump. A real deer fence is usually about eight feet high. We've had one deer and it jumped the gate which is really the lowest point. These parts are not totally effective on their own because in this place you can see it's just a fence grass one side and the orchard on the other. But most of it isn't like this. Most of it is actually like this. We add to the depth of the fence by having trees and or usually both having brush piles. Deer can see pretty well in two dimensions. Having a fence is a great strategy. But you can make a smaller fence go farther. If you add trees along your fence row, that gives the impression that maybe there isn't a place to jump because the fence and then there's branches. Then another one you can do is to add a brush pile. So we simply use these areas to pile the brush from the clippings and prunings from the orchard. It's a multi-purpose, it's, it's a habitat for wildlife, and it also creates some depth. So now our fence is not just high, it stretches wide. And deer tend to see in two dimensions. They see one element, a height. They don't judge the distance as well. Or if it is a distance, and they're not sure if they can jump it, they hesitate and they'll look somewhere else. So having the fence is good, having trees is better, having trees and brush makes a smaller fence that technically shouldn't even work well, makes it really effective. One of the details of a good deer fence is that it goes absolutely to the ground and this fence actually has, and I can't dig it out, it's, it's already in the ground. It had two barbed wires at the bottom because deer will crawl under a fence. So having it absolutely tight against the ground uh, will really reduce the chance that deer sneak in under the fence. So you can take a smaller fence, make it thicker, put a hedge around, put some trees around, and that will really reduce the chance that deer will jump in. 
in some areas you wouldn't even know that there is a fence. The hedge is so full and the young plants are filled in underneath the trees. But in fact, there is a fence. It's in there. It's right behind all these trees. So certainly a deer wouldn't feel comfortable coming through all of this to jump in. And they'll keep looking. A hedge like this is a great benefit. It doesn't happen overnight. This hedge is 40 years old. It'll take a while. So you're thinking, yeah, but I want to plant my trees. Well, maybe plant the hedge at the same time. And then you get over time the benefits. This thing is a, you, can, you can't feel it, but it's a windbreak. It's windy right now, but it's not as windy here on the back side of the hedge. And so the same for the orchard. The orchard doesn't get the full effect of the wind by having this hedge act as a windbreak. It's also a, a great wildlife corridor. This is where a lot of the birds come and spend the night as well. Not just as a local thing, but to move through as a corridor. It is a big plus if you're interested in having more wildlife, but it's also a great preventive against deer. Now I know why they call this a deer fence. Because you think, well, it's meant to be a, a fence to keep out deer. But it's also one that you say, fence, you're a deer. Because it keeps them out. <laughs> now, before you tell me, Stefan, you can put in a fedge. You say, what's a fedge? What the fedge? Well, a fedge is a fence hedge. It's an old style of doing fe hedges, doing fences. It was used to keep sheep in. And it involved a complex system of layering shrubs. So you would put trees and shrubs, mostly trees actually, and you would cut them down at an angle and weave them among each other. These weren't cut down, they were basically just severed and bent over. So it would allow the tree to be alive, but to be tight. It could keep out sheep. So if it keeps out sheep, it'll keep out deer. And if you have the time and inclination to do something like that, hedges, no, fedges, fedges are a great way to keep out deer and to add a tremendous diversity as a hedge and a fence just try it if you really want to get into something really neat and needed and biodiverse and good for birds and good for wildlife and good to keep out the deer and good for your orchard. Oh, a fedge. If you've got little trees still, deer can be murder on small trees. We used to have sheep in the orchard. Deer are much like sheep. With the sheep, Anything to breast height would be absolutely stripped. The branches were there, but there were no leaves. And deer can do very similar. Plus, deer tend to go up on their hind legs if they can't reach food, and they'll go even higher. So, all your young trees will suffer a lot of damage if you have deer and you let them have access to your trees. I like to say, plant a fence before you plant fruit trees. Otherwise, your trees won't ever come to fruit. And if they do, they'll probably be little bonsai trees like this one. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hope your trees are fruitful.